Hello, today I'm going to be talking about diabetes, the silent epidemic. So before we get started, here's a little bit about myself. My name is Marco Dos. I'm a Nashville, Tennessee resident. I'm a rising sophomore at Enyaq High School. Some extracurriculars I'm involved in are Enyaq High School Student Council and pre-servant at my local church. I'm also interested in pursuing a career in law. So what is diabetes? Diabetes is a chronic metabolic disease characterized by elevated levels of blood glucose or blood sugar, which over time leads to serious damage to the heart, blood vessels, eyes, kidneys, and nerves. Three main types of diabetes are type one, type two, and gestational diabetes. Type one diabetes. Type one diabetes is thought to have to be caused by an autoimmune reaction that stops the body from producing insulin. Type one diabetes accounts for a small percentage of people who are diabetic. Type 2 diabetes. With type 2 diabetes, the body doesn't use insulin well and can't keep blood sugar at normal levels. Most diabetics have type 2 diabetes. Gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes develops in pregnant women, women who have never had diabetes. If someone has gestational diabetes, the baby could be at higher risk for health problems later in life. Every year, 2 to 10% of pregnancies in the United States are affected by gestational diabetes. So how serious is diabetes? Diabetes is a very serious disease. It affects people from all social economic statuses, but it's more frequent among people of older age. Among the leading causes of death worldwide, diabetes is ranked number nine. High blood glucose claims the lives of around 3.4 million people annually. 34.2 million adults in the United States have diabetes. One in five of people with diabetes are unaware they have it, which is why diabetes is often called the silent killer. This chart shows the increase in diabetes rates across the United States throughout the course of 12 years. As observed by the chart in 2004, the United States did not have a large scale issue with diabetes. However, this seems to have changed drastically in 2016. The rise of diabetes in youth. Both type one and type two diabetes are becoming more fre frequent among, among youth under the age of 20 in the United States. The number of youth with diabetes has been increasing since 2016. However, this chart does not represent past 2016. Diabetes among youth has been on a steady incline. So why is diabetes on the rise? Now that we know that diabetes is on the rise in adults and youth, we can begin to ask why. Type two diabetes is a disease that comes as a risk of obesity. High calorie and processed foods are popular in the United States, but are also often factors that lead to obesity. These types of foods are usually cheaper, last longer time than fresh food or produce and are easier to obtain. How do we prevent diabetes? The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, also known as the CDC, is working to prevent more people from becoming type two diabetic by helping to identify people with prediabetes. The CDC is working, with, with, is working to improve health of all people with diabetes. Some of this is done through the National Diabetes Prevention Program, which is a lifestyle change program for adults at risk of type two diabetes. The Diabetes Prevention Program has over 400,000 participants and has shown to cut risks by of type two diabetes by as much as 58%. For participants over 60 years of age, it is as much as 71%. While the Diabetes Prevention Program is an affordable program for participants at risk of type two diabetes, it is only for participants ages 18 and up. This leaves an increasing gap for children who are at risk of diabetes. A solution for this is to introduce diabetes awareness in health classes at schools. This would allow children to familiarize themselves with diabetes and the risks it may bring. The diabetes education in schools would also help youth to keep track of what they're consuming and how it may affect them, the future in their life. These are the references I have used in my presentation. I would like to thank the organizers of the Global Health Leaders Conference for giving me this opportunity to present. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me at my email. Thank you.